Beneath the stunning landscapes of New Zealand's South Island lies one of the world's most dangerous geological threats, the Alpine Fault. This massive fracture marks the collision zone between the Pacific and Australian tectonic plates, a boundary that has been shaping the land for millions of years. Over centuries, it has been silently building immense pressure deep underground. Now, scientists warn the fault is primed for rupture. The Alpine Fault is no ordinary seismic risk. It produces powerful magnitude 8 earthquakes, which occur roughly every 300 years. The last one struck in 1717, and that was over 300 years ago. In geological terms, time is up now. Recent tremors, creeping land shifts, and growing tectonic strain all suggest that the fault is entering its most dangerous phase yet. When it finally breaks, the consequences could be catastrophic. Entire towns cut off, critical infrastructure destroyed, and lives upended in seconds. With mounting signs of unrest, the Alpine Fault has become a silent threat beneath New Zealand, one whose awakening may be closer than anyone dares to admit. Today, let's delve into the dangers of the Alpine Fault, exploring its geology, seismic history, and the growing signs that New Zealand's next megaquake is fast approaching. The Alpine Fault is a major plate boundary fault that forms part of the boundary between the Pacific and Australian tectonic plates. It runs for more than 600 kilometers along the western side of New Zealand's South Island, from Milford Sound in the southwest to the Marlborough region in the northeast. This fault is classified as a right lateral strike slip fault, meaning the two sides slide past each other horizontally. However, the Alpine Fault is also oblique in nature, meaning there is a vertical component to its movement. As a result, while the Pacific Plate moves northwestward, relative to the Australian plate, the uplift of the Southern Alps occurs simultaneously, creating one of the fastest rising mountain ranges on Earth. Tectonic convergence along the Alpine Fault occurs at a rate of roughly 30 millimeters per year. This is an exceptionally fast rate for a continental fault and is one of the reasons why the Alpine Fault is considered so hazardous. Every year, a small portion of this motion is released through minor tremors, but the vast majority of stress builds up until it is catastrophically released during a major rupture. Unlike many other active faults around the world, the Alpine Fault is well-defined and continuous over a long distance, meaning that when it ruptures, it often does so along a very large section of the fault, producing earthquakes of high magnitude. The Alpine Fault has a long and well-documented history of producing massive earthquakes. Unlike faults where records are sparse or incomplete, the Alpine Fault offers one of the most continuous and scientifically validated paleoseismic records anywhere in the world. Studies of sediment layers in lakes and rivers, such as those from Lake Makaro and Hokuri Creek, have allowed scientists to reconstruct a timeline of at least 27 major earthquakes over the past 8,000 years. These events have occurred on average every 250 to 300 years, making the Alpine Fault one of the most regularly recurring sources of large earthquakes on Earth. The most recent major rupture occurred in 1717 AD, an event estimated to have reached magnitude 8.1. This earthquake ruptured several hundred kilometers of the fault, with shaking likely felt across much of the South Island. Oral histories from the Maori people also refer to ground shaking and landscape changes around this period, aligning with scientific data. But no casualty figures or impact records exist due to the pre-colonial time frame in which it occurred. The consistency in recurrence intervals combined with the length of time since the last rupture, forms the core of the growing concern among geologists. The Alpine Fault is overdue for its next major earthquake. Scientific concern around the Alpine Fault has intensified over the past year, as recent seismic activity and new research suggest the fault may be nearing its next major rupture. On April 29, 2025, a magnitude 6.2 earthquake struck off the west coast of New Zealand's South Island, about 300 kilometers southwest of Invercargill. Although not directly on the Alpine Fault, its shallow depth of 10 kilometers and proximity to the fault's southern segment raised concern. A magnitude 4.1 aftershock soon followed, 
hinting at active stress transfer in the region. Between 2024 and early 2025, multiple tremors ranging from magnitude 3.0 to 4.5 were recorded near fault-adjacent areas like Fjordland and Heist, many within 20 to 30 kilometers of the fault trace and felt by residents. These quakes, paired with GPS data confirming continued strain accumulation, reinforce that the fault remains critically stressed. A breakthrough study in October 2024 revealed that the 1717 rupture propagated from south to north, suggesting the next quake could send seismic energy toward Canterbury and Marlborough, heavily populated regions that could face amplified shaking and structural damage. In addition, satellite imagery, seismic arrays, and borehole sensors have detected subtle ground shifts and micro-seismicity along the fault. Together, these signs suggest the Alpine Fault is not dormant. It is silently approaching its next major rupture. Given the historical recurrence interval of 250 to 300 years, scientists estimate there is a 75% chance of a full-scale rupture of the Alpine Fault within the next 50 years. Such a full-scale rupture would likely produce a magnitude 8.0 or greater earthquake, breaking up to 400 kilometers of the fault in a single event. The shaking could last up to two minutes, with violent ground motion near the fault trace and severe shaking extending across much of the South Island. The rupture is most likely to begin in the central west coast and propagate southward toward Fjordland, but its effects could be felt as far north as Wellington and as far south as Invercargill. Beyond the shaking itself, the earthquake is expected to trigger widespread landslides, particularly in the Southern Alps and West Coast regions, potentially cutting off transport routes and burying valleys. Liquefaction in low-lying urban areas could cause buildings and infrastructure to sink or tilt. Debris from landslides may dam rivers, creating temporary lakes that risk catastrophic flooding if they burst. In coastal zones or fjords, tsunami generation from underwater landslides is also a possibility. In short, a full rupture of the Alpine Fault would not be a single disaster, but a cascade of multiple compounding hazards. The human toll from a full Alpine Fault rupture could be devastating. Thousands across the South Island would be at serious risk, particularly in vulnerable West Coast towns located near the fault where entire communities could be left isolated. Many would face injury, displacement, or worse, with emergency services stretched beyond capacity. Widespread infrastructure collapse, including roads, bridges, electricity, water, and communication networks, would paralyze large parts of the region. With transport routes severed, reaching isolated communities could take days. The economic impact would be staggering. Disruption to tourism, agriculture, and freight would halt major industries, with damage and recovery costs expected to run into the tens of billions of dollars. The psychological effects would be just as severe. Entire communities could be uprooted, homes and livelihoods lost, and the trauma of the disaster felt for years. For many, the quake would not only reshape the land, but life as they knew it. Recognizing the Alpine Fault's immense threat New Zealand has become a global leader in earthquake science and risk reduction. The deep fault drilling project, conducted on the Alpine Fault, revealed unusually high temperatures and fluid pressures at shallow depths, evidence that the fault is mechanically weak and prone to rapid, large-scale ruptures. In response, the AF-8 project was launched as a coordinated national plan involving local and central agencies. It outlines detailed protocols for the critical first seven days after a rupture, covering rescue, communication, logistics, and medical support. Public readiness is also a priority. Schools, hospitals, and businesses conduct regular drills, while households are urged to maintain emergency kits and communication plans. Monitoring systems continue to expand using GPS, seismic sensors, and satellite data to track ground deformation. While the exact timing of an earthquake can't yet be predicted with accuracy, this growing network helps refine forecasts and guide infrastructure and emergency planning. The Alpine Fault is a powerful reminder of the dynamic forces shaping New Zealand's past, 
present, and future. Its long history of regular, high-magnitude earthquakes and its current state of strain leave little doubt. A major rupture is not a distant possibility, but an approaching certainty. Yet within this looming threat lies a rare advantage, the ability to prepare. Decades of scientific research, advanced monitoring, and coordinated planning have given New Zealand a head start that few nations possess. Still, knowledge alone is not enough. As development encroaches on high-risk zones and population centers grow, the need for urgent action is clear. The Alpine Fault will rupture again. What remains uncertain is how ready the country will be when it does. In the face of this inevitable event, one question lingers. Will New Zealand respond with foresight or be forced to rebuild in hindsight?